on the Super Review Live, let's take a look at the Shozi Rouge, which is another in-ear monitor, obviously from the company Shozi. Um, all right, that doesn't really tell you anything. What I can tell you about this though, is, well, for starters, it comes in at, at around $180. So this is not especially a budget chi-fi. This is kind of mid, mid-budget chi-fi. Um, other things worth calling out is it's a three driver design. It's got two balanced armatures. Shows you says that they are Knowles balanced armatures covering the mid range and the treble. And then the base, the low end is covered by a dynamic driver. So this is a hybrid IEM. Uh, other things worth calling out about it up front. Oh, actually, I mean, the bit that's in the title of this video, the Shozi Rouge, kind of like the Canera Freya that I just recently reviewed. This is a hand painted IEM. And as we get into the table and I give you like little close ups, you're going to see that it's, I think, pretty attractive. And, you know, also that's kind of neat about the fact that it's hand painted is that every version of this is going to be somewhat unique. If you buy this, your version of the Rouge is kind of going to be your own personal Rouge. And I think that's a cool touch. Apart from that, yeah, I don't know, not a ton I can tell you right now, but we are going to do a full review. Um, I'm going to go ahead and, you know, start like I typically do by talking about the build quality and the accessories and stuff that you get with the Rouge. And then I'll talk about the sound, end it with a conclusion and a, and a review score. And we'll probably take that, take care of that in about 10 or 15 minutes. That said, this is a live stream. And if you're watching me right now, you are watching me live. Well, if you are watching live, you're watching live. If you're not watching live, kind of missing out. You can subscribe to the channel and like ding the YouTube bell so that YouTube lets you know next time I'm live. And for the folks that are here live now, while I'm going through this review, please hit me up with questions about the Shozi Rouge, anything that I don't get to in the review or anything that maybe isn't clear, or just something that came to mind for you personally. Um, hit me up with questions in the live chat. And at the end of the review, at the end of the 10 to 15 minute long review, I am going to spend some time talking with you guys and hopefully answer your questions. Uh, just maybe a little bit more context. I got this thing about two weeks ago. And so I have been spending quite a bit of time with the Shozi Rouge. And, you know, at the same time I was reviewing the Canera Freya, uh, but also comparing it to things like the MAGA OC K5, which in this price range at around $180, the K5 is still probably my favorite I am. So how does this thing compare? Let's get into the review. And like I mentioned, I'm not going to let you down. I'm going to start by talking about the build of the Shozi Rouge, which as you can see here, you can now start to appreciate that hand painted design. Frankly, I think this is a pretty attractive IEM. Uh, I know maybe, you know, this pink color might not be for everybody, but personally, I quite like it. I quite like having something a little bit different in my IEM closet. Not everything has to look the same. And I think that the Rouge going for this specific color scheme, I think it's, I'm happy that they did it. Um, you can see that the painting is definitely more interesting here on the outer shell than it is here on the inner part of it. but. I guess that comes, that comes expected. Uh, the maybe other thing worth calling out is that these IEMs, these buds are super, super lightweight. They are ostensibly very hollow uh, resin shell and you kind of need it hollow to do this sort of painting scheme. And frankly, I'm okay with that. Um, the, the general shape I find pretty good. Uh, it fits my ear quite well. And I think worth calling out, especially is like the, the isolation and just like how tight a fit these things give. Uh, I'll go do, I'll do a quick fit demo real quick here for you. Um, just to show you how these things look in my ears and generally, yeah, like they, they create quite a seal. Um, despite the fact that they are hollow, my hearing is quite occluded at the moment. Uh, probably an incorrect usage of that term, but there you go. Um, yeah, I think generally I find them fairly comfortable. They do take up a lot of space in my ear. I don't know if that comes across. Uh, it's not quite, well, it's definitely not nearly as large as something like uh, the Canera Freya that I recently reviewed and also not as, not as large in my ear as something like the Moondrop Blessing, but it is on the larger side. And I think contributing to that is uh, these stems, which I showed a little bit, the stems are a little bit on the large side. You can see that they kind of flare out here to hold the tips on, which is appreciated, but it does 
I think have the effect of taking up a fair amount of space in my ear canal. Generally, I found them comfortable uh, and I was able to sleep with this as an IEM. Not necessarily the best sleeping IEM, but it does get the job done. Um, yeah, I don't know, not much more to say about the buds themselves. I mean, maybe worth calling out, these are the tips that came with the Rouge and you might notice that these are not the tips that I have on the Rouge. The tips that I have on here are actually just some final E-type tips that personally I like better. Uh, and I like these tips better not just because, I mean, there's nothing really wrong with the stock tips that come with the Rouge. They're your typical tip with, you know, not the grippiest rubber, but pretty typical what you would get with uh, an IEM. But mostly I just don't like the aesthetic of them, frankly, and this is such an, a nice aesthetic IEM in my opinion that I felt it was kind of ruined by these tips, and so that's why I went ahead and threw on my own personal uh, set of final ear tips. Um, let's see, I we should also talk about this cable, which uh, is probably my least favorite part of the build of this IEM. So, as you can kind of see, it's just wound itself back up, even though I had it completely unwound and I was just wearing it a second ago because this thing is quite memory prone. I think it's a fairly attractive cable, I suppose, um, but it, yeah, I mean, it's fairly attractive. It's not especially stiff and it's comfortable. Like I don't have any issues there. I didn't have any issues with, um, I didn't have any issues with, you know, friction or any sort of microphonics transferring into the ear canals. You got the preformed ear hooks, which, you know, this is about how I like it done. Uh, and they are a two pin cable just to call out if you're interested in replacing it or otherwise. But um, yeah, it's not my favorite cable. Maybe the one thing that I did actually really like about this cable is the Y split and the chin cinch, which maybe seems like an odd thing to call out as something that I like, but I think that the hardware here is actually really pretty nice. I think it looks nice. I like that it's kind of like this polished, well, it's like a, a lightly polished steel. It almost has a raw character to it. But also, it's got this little trick where you've got the chin cinch built into the design of the Y split, and it's actually a very, very functional chin cinch. This is here, this is me kind of flicking it with my thumb just to show you how good of a grip it has in its position. And this thing is a chin cinch that's actually functional, and I appreciate having a functional chin cinch, especially after the chin cinch that came on the Freya. So, yeah, generally build. Quality, I think, is quite solid on the Canera. I almost called it the Canera. On the, the Shozy Rouge. Uh, again, fit, aesthetics, love them. The cable, not my favorite. And I don't know, the the hollow shells do do give it sort of a, I don't want to say cheap, because it, it's there's there's much more expensive IEMs that have these hollow shells, but I do tend to like uh, an IEM with a little bit more weight in the bud. But... I don't know, that way it doesn't do anything. It just kind of convinces my subconscious that it feels nicer than it is. So that's not a serious complaint. Yeah, generally pretty happy with the build of the Rouge. So that gets us into talking about the sound, which is probably what you care about the most. So in the title of this video, I already alluded to it a little bit. I called this the better painted IEM, alluding to the Canera Freya that I recently reviewed. Um, the Freya, I think, is again actually beautiful hardware it looks really nice it's built quite nice it fits my ears pretty well although maybe a little bit more challenging than something a little bit less universal than something like the rouge uh, but when it came to sound quality the canara freya let me down quite a bit and i gotta say the sound quality on the rouge despite this having one fewer driver in it and despite this being actually a fair bit cheaper than the canara freya i think the rouge sounds quite a bit better and now I'm actually, that's kind of kind of going to be the end of the comparisons because I don't think that there's a ton similar between the sound signature of the Rouge and the sound signature of the Freya. How I would describe the sound signature of the Rouge is kind of a bright neutral with a little bit of a wide band bass boost to, to keep it, you know, give it a, a decent amount of body. But yeah, I would describe this as, as very transparent sounding earphone. Uh, it's got a fair amount of treble emphasis, but maybe just on the edge of, um, it's not harsh, but maybe the edge of strident treble, but I didn't really have issues with sibilance. 
I think sound signature wise, the thing that I have that's probably the most closest to the Shozy Rouge is actually the Tin Hi-Fi T2 Plus. Uh, the T2 Plus now it's a $60 single dynamic driver earphone. There's some other differences between them, but just kind of general tonal character. I think that this is somewhat, this is probably more similar to the T2 Plus uh, than anything else. I think between those two, the T2 Plus probably has a stronger bass presence and the T2 Plus also has maybe a smidge more in that mid treble spike, which makes the T2 Plus a little bit sibilant. I didn't have it again, I think I already mentioned it, but I didn't really have any issues with sibilance here on the Rouge. Um, but yeah, because of that, I would, you know, I, I described the T2 Plus sound signature as sort of a mild V shape. I would not necessarily call this uh, the Rouge a, a V shape, although, you know, you certainly could if you wanted to. This to me comes across as closer to a neutral sound signature just because of, again, slightly less bass emphasis and slightly less of that treble spike. But we should get into a little bit more detail in the character of that sound. So I just kind of gave you the overview of the land, the, the tonal characteristics of the Rouge. But more specifically, um, I think that the, the BAs in this earphone that are handling the treble and the mid-range are, in my opinion, the strength of the Rouge. They actually sound really pretty good. And maybe some of the best sounding like two BAs, um, the, I don't know. I. I, I, I get this a lot where I, I, I try on an IEM that is a hybrid that's got Knowles balance armatures and I, for whatever reason, assume or I kind of expect slightly higher quality from a Knowles driver and I shouldn't, but I am commonly let down. Um, I, I don't know. I, I feel like I've not really gotten the what I expect out of Knowles drivers in the past. These, however, I am quite happy with. The mid range and the treble. The, the resolution, again, the transparency and the detail, quite nice. It, I don't also, like, I don't think that these things struggle with uh, BA timbre, as it, as it were. You know, some BA IEMs, they can come across as slightly plasticky. And I, I don't know how much of that has to do with um, just a lack of contrast in the lower mids versus the upper mids, but I think that the lower mid range on the Rouge is relatively, relatively scooped, which means that you do get, you know, that upper mid range, which there's not like a ton of contrast between them, but just generally, I think that the lower mid range just doesn't have a lot of presence to it, which allows the upper mid range and the lower treble to come across nice and clear. Um, again, I think uh, clarity, transparency is pretty strong here on the Rouge. I think also imaging is quite nice on the Rouge, probably because of those same characteristics. And generally, yeah, I'm actually really quite happy with the, the BA execution here on the Rouge. Then we get into the bass, which again is being covered by a separate dynamic driver earf earphone. Separate di dynamic driver. I'll get that out correctly one day. And that unfortunately is where I think the Rouge is probably the weakest. The dynamic driver or the, the base on uh, the Rouge has got, I think, a pretty good level. Like I'm pretty satisfied with the level of the base. Again, it's slightly elevated um, and the elevation kind of is mid bass carried into the sub bass with, I think, a little bit more emphasis on the mid bass, which again, I think is a pretty similar description to what I would give the Tin Hi-Fi T2 Plus. The bigger difference for me though, however, in terms of the, the base character and why I'm a little bit let down here is I think twofold. One, I think that the, um, the definition in the base is not as sharp and as well-defined as it is on something like the Tin Hi-Fi T2 Plus, as well as you know some other earphones that I think do base better. It just comes across a little bit soft and light on detail. The other thing, and this is, I think, the, the bigger issue for me, is that the bass on here, more than any other hybrid earphone I've heard, seems the most detached from the rest of the music. Uh, it's just very, I don't know, to, at least to my ear, it feels very obvious that the dynamic driver is separate from the other drivers handling the, the, the rest of the music, and, and maybe that comes Maybe that does contribute a little bit to stronger, you know, imaging and like separation and layering in the sounds. But I do find that here with the Rouge, it does come at the expense of 
um, just a natural sounding integration of the bass and the upper end, the, the top end of the music. So that I would say is probably the biggest weakness here with the Rouge. Otherwise, I'm pretty happy with the sound. Again, you know, relatively bright neutral sound, it's just a tad too much trouble, but I didn't find it, you know, overly, overly strident and I didn't find it um, sibilant at all. So I, I think that was pretty good. I think that the air, there's a decent amount of air here, not a ton, but generally pretty good. Uh, imaging, pretty strong. It's just that bass character that I find a little bit on the lacking side, I suppose. You know, that bass, there's plenty of bass there. Uh, it gives the sound, you know, despite the fact that I, I mentioned those BAs are kind of bringing that upper mid range forward, lower mid's a little bit scooped, you get a little bit too much treble. I think that the bass that is here keeps it from sounding overly thin, even though it is a little bit on the thin siding, sounding I am. That's not a bad thing for me. Uh, it's just that the character of the bass I find a little bit distracting. So yeah, I mean, that is basically the sound. We can do a little bit of comparisons. I didn't have the foresight to bring the, the IEMs here to the table, but I did want to mention a little bit, you know, compared to the MAGA OC K5, which MAGA OC K5 comes in at the same price as the Shozy Rouge, around $180, although it might be harder to find now. Uh, I think that between this and the K5, I'm, I much prefer the K5 personally. I think that um, just, I mean, the well, one, for starters, the, the K5, despite having uh, BAs for bass, I think that the bass on the K5s is a little bit better integrated and it just sounds more natural. Yeah, it just sounds like it's a more natural part of the sound than it does here on the Chosey Rouge. Uh, and then K5, you know, similarly, I think you could describe it as a, a bright neutral sound, although I would say that the, the K5 probably has less of that gap between the upper mids and the lower mids. Um, so I would probably describe the K5 as a little bit closer to neutral, although still on the brightish side. Uh, and then again, I, I think also the K5 is a little bit stronger in imaging, but roughly I think that these things are fairly competitive uh, in, in terms of general sound signature. And if you like one, there's a pretty good chance that you will like the other. So, I mean, that's about as much as I have to say about the Shozy Rouge. I think it's a pretty solid IEM. Uh, again, quite like the build quite like the fit and the sound I find pretty pretty satisfying just with a little bit of a little bit of a miss with that bass. So out of five stars, I'm gonna go ahead and give, take a guess, I'm gonna go ahead and give the Chosy Rouge three stars. I think I showed that three before the three showed up on the screen, but if you guess three stars, good job. Um, yeah, it's a pretty solid I am for $180. I think not a bad choice, wouldn't necessarily be my first choice, but if you are particularly attracted to this aesthetic, uh, I don't think that you're throwing your money away by going after something like the Chosy Rouge. I think this does this hand painted aesthetic, maybe not quite as well as the Canera Freya, but I think that the overall package is much, much stronger than the Freya and at a lower price. So that is the Chosy Rouge. Like I always do, I've, if you're interested in checking this thing out, I've got links in the description down below. While you're down there, if you found this review helpful, please hit the like button. If you want to be part of the next live stream, subscribe to the channel, ding the bell, and then I'll see you on the next one. But, 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 that is the end of this review. However, if you want to stick around for the live Q&A, please stick around because that's what we're going to do. I've got a couple of questions lined up here in live chat. I'll answer those questions, have a little conversation with you folks. And if any other new questions pop up, please feel free to drop a line. Um, also, just wanted to call out too, if you want questions, you kind of want to talk about IEMs in real time with me outside of these live streams, you can join my Discord server. I do have a link in a pinned comment below this video. Join the Discord. We've got a bunch of people that like to talk about IEMs, talk about a bunch of other things and that would be great to have you. But yeah, let's go ahead and go to the chat. Unfortunately, I'm gonna let you know ahead of time, I'm gonna make this a quick one because I do have some plans for later this afternoon. All right. Uh, do, do, do. Juan and Lee saying, hey. Hey. Lam Tung saying, yo, yo. And bathtub with the A, A back. Thanks for tuning in, folks. 
Uh, Devlin Sai saying, this looks like some giant's decay tooth. Curious for a little bit more clarification on what you're describing, but are you, are you, are you saying that these things look like teeth? Because I can kind of get that. Yeah, I think this aesthetic here on the Chosy Rouge is, I really like it. I do really quite like it. You know, again, this color might not be for everybody, but I personally am a big fan of it. Sean, what's up? How's it going? Welcome back. Adam is asking or saying, I guess the drivers only really help the tuners tune. Yeah, I, I may be alluding to the count of drivers. And again, I get this, I get this feedback a lot from folks that are maybe new to the audio hobby. Um, people might ask, you know, why would you recommend this earphone over this one? This one's cheaper and it has more drivers. And just, I, I gotta say that I have not really found any correlation between a count of drivers and how much I like the sound. At least not necessarily. I mean, some of my favorite IEMs do have a fair amount of drivers, so I don't wanna say there's zero correlation, but there are definitely some earphones that I don't like that much that also have a ton of drivers. So maybe there is no correlation. And maybe also worth calling out, like some of my favorite sounding audio equipment is over ear open back headphones, kind of like this Hi-Fem and Sundara I've got sitting back here. Those are just single drivers per ear. And I think they do sound in a way that you just can't get with, you know, 20 different balanced armature drivers. DNT Arc asking, how good is the sound stage? I have a pet peeve with bright, neutral, narrow IMs. They really hurt my ears. So, I mean, I'm going to start by saying that I've kind of avoided using the term soundstage uh, just broadly because I'm not sure that I what I perceive as soundstage is what other people perceive as soundstage. Um, I think what I tend to prefer in, uh, in sound that, that I've kind of equated with soundstage in the past, but some people might not, is just the definition and the separation between sounds. The fact that each sound sounds like it's coming from a distinct point in space and that it doesn't sound like it's all coming from sort of one direction. Uh, sometimes that can sound, I guess, like it's coming more or for, you know, closer or further away from my head, but generally at least maybe it's just an I am thing. I find that staging wise, they all, I don't know, is, is if, if it does the layering and the separation well, I'm going to have that sense that it sounds bigger to me and like I mentioned, I think that the Shosy Rouge does do that layering and separation pretty well. So I think this thing does that better than a lot of other IEMs in this price range. In fact, I saw another um, comment and I'll probably get to that one a little bit more later. The uh, Moondrop K Triple X, I found very nicely tuned IEM, uh, a little bit on the bassy side and warm side. And I found that it didn't in my head feel like a very large sound stage. To me, this sounds like a, a stronger sound stage. It's not like especially large. This doesn't sound to me like something like a Cost KSC 75, which is a $15 earphone or headphone. I think that sound stage, that to me is very obviously a, a larger sound stage. When it comes to IEMs, it's, I don't know. I, I haven't heard anything maybe apart from the, uh, the, the Tons Jim Hana that kind of obviously stage is quite large. Sean saying a fair score. Yeah, I think, look, I don't, I don't know also how a lot of people will react to my star scores. And frankly, like the way that I've used them hasn't been totally consistent over the life of this YouTube channel. But for me, three stars is not a bad score. Three stars is like, if this is a thing that you think will fit your needs, I'm not gonna tell you that it's a bad direction. I think there's some pretty good reasons to go for something like the Shosy Rouge. It might not be my favorite IEM in this price range. Still like the Mago CK5, but it's definitely not my least favorite. Something like the Canera Freya, I would probably steer you away from just based on the sound. Um, so just kind of the difference between two and three stars. Lucas KB asking, what would I choose between the KXX and the Shosy Rouge? So that's an interesting question. I actually don't have the KXX on me right now. I've got them out on loan. But 
um, I do have fairly strong memory of the KXX, and I think that tuning wise, like just straight tonality, I prefer the Chosy Rouge. Uh, it's, you know, if you like, if you've been following my channel, you know that I tend to prefer a brighter tune and that's what you get here with the Rouge. The, but that's not the only characteristics of the sound. I think maybe also, you know, I just mentioned that I think the Chosy Rouge does imaging and separation, I think, stronger than the KXX. Uh, and that's another thing that I really like about, uh, that'll make me choose one IEM over another. But I think that the KXX is just a more cohesive sound. Like the, the fact that the, you know, that bass character I described here with the, the Shozy does, I think, detract quite a bit from those other strengths of the IM. So if I had to choose between the Rouge and the KXX, I personally would probably go with the KXX, even though tonally not necessarily my favorite um, and imaging wise, not a strength of the KXX, even though it is somewhat of a strength here. I do find that the bass is just uh, better integrated into the KXX and overall just sounds like a more coherent package. So there you go. Aesthetically, I think they're both pretty good. Um, I think that the cable and the build quality on the KXX is a little bit nicer than what you get here with the Rouge, but the Rouge is definitely a unique looker, I think. Soro Pashi asking, what's up, what's up? I, actually, sorry, if that's a serious what's up, what's up? It is about 1 o'clock, 1 p.m. Uh, here in the Bay Area, the San Francisco Bay Area. Um, what am I doing? I don't know. I'm doing this review and then later today going for a hike with some amigos. So that's what's going on. Weather is pretty nice. It is about 66 degrees outside Fahrenheit. And that's pretty comfortable for me. AY Jakey saying hello. What's up? How you doing? Lucas KB asking, does dynamic driver have better slam quality than balanced armatures? Um, so typically slam you tribute to the base and I think um, kind of in sort of in between the sort of a combination of mid bass and sub bass frequencies in together, giving you that impact uh, with a little bit of rumble. Um, typically dynamic drivers will do bass, will do sort of that. It's Slam is almost like a, above just the tone and the volume of the bass, it's sort of a, a physical, tangible quality. And that's something that I find balanced armatures just really don't generally do that well. Uh, and so I do think that if you're looking for that sort of physical, tangible quality in your bass, a dynamic driver is gonna more likely give that to you. Now we get to this, the dynamic driver in this. I don't know that it's necessarily delivering on that. Um, yeah, again, just the, the base character here of the Rouge is a little bit on the soft, undefined side. Uh, not overly so, like, I don't think it's bad base, but I don't think that it quite lives up to the promise of a dynamic driver base. IN4 saying the cable looks very nice. Yeah, let's do a, another little overhead. And so this, what, what makes a nice cable? There's aesthetics, yes, but for me, what makes a nice cable is, does it co coil up like this and does it hold its place? I don't like a cable that's like overly stiff and will start to, you'll, you'll notice this with other cables, start to kind of like unwind itself because it's so stiff. I don't have that issue here with the cable on the Rouge. Uh, but the other thing that I think makes a nice cable is a cable that doesn't hold its shape. And unfortunately, I think that the cable on the Rouge does hold its shape. Uh, I don't have any issues really with tangling, even though I just tangled it. Um, generally, I think it doesn't tangle, but you can see here that it's a little bit on the springy side. The fact that it is not straight because of gravity, like I would want gravity to completely drag this thing straight, but it's not, it's a bit springy. And that's probably the worst character of the cable. Otherwise it's fine. Mr. Beast of East, are you still planning on doing a spreadsheet? So the answer is yes, I actually do have that spreadsheet. 
Um, I haven't made it public, but if you join the Discord server, I have been known to link to it on the Discord server, and I would be glad to give you a link to it. It's not necessarily in the most presentable shape at this moment. I feel like I want to, I kind of have, so Beast of, if for the, the folks that don't know what Beast of East is talking about, I have a spreadsheet of all the different uh, IEMs and headphones that I reviewed. I've got them kind of in categories, and then I've got them with star ratings at their given prices. So this is the thing about my star ratings that uh, maybe is not totally clear to a lot of other folks is that they are, and maybe this should be clear, they are relative to the price, right? So a five star, a five star $50 IEM is not necessarily better than a three star $200 IEM. Not necessarily, uh, because at $200, my expectations, my, my hopes, my hopes, my hopes and dreams are a little bit more strict. Uh, and so basically what this spreadsheet attempts to do is to take an IEM, like something like, let's say the, the Tin Hi-Fi T2 Plus, I gave it five stars at 60 bucks, very nice IEM. But if you have, let's say a hundred dollars to spend, how does that $60 10 Hi-Fi T4 compare to other things that are available at $100. And so what my spreadsheet attempts to do is sort of apply those scores over prices, assuming like, um, yeah, just trying to compare it to things that are more expensive to it uh, to give you a sense for, all right, I have $100 to spend, but, and these are the best things at $100, but are they necessarily that much better than things at $60? And that's kind of what I attempt to do. Now, also a big caveat with, this better than sort of paradigm is that I'm not necessarily even the strongest believer in that. Like, um, what is, there is no like objectively better than. This is all just my opinion. Even though I'm putting numbers on it and I know it kind of looks like science, it's definitely not science. Just my personal opinion and how I would personally uh, rate things or how much, like how satisfied I would be with a given product if I paid a given price for it. So hopefully that clarifies that. And again, just to just to, to, to follow up on that, if you are interested in seeing that spreadsheet, join the Discord server, ping me, I'll send you a link to it. It's not like, I'm not like hiding it or anything. I just haven't made it public because I feel like it's not quite ready yet. Or I feel like the public version of that spreadsheet might not actually be a spreadsheet. It might be like a website, but we'll see. William Mendoka, what's up everyone? What did I miss? Well, you missed the review. You're here live, you missed the review, but don't worry too much because one, you can always go back and watch it, uh, but two, I can also just tell you, the Chosy Rouge, I think bright sounding IEM, uh, nice build, very nice aesthetic. I gave it three stars out of five, not too shabby for 180 bucks. William Mendoka also asking, have I heard of the Anthem 5? Nope. I haven't heard of the Anthem 5. I haven't even heard of Anthem. Izoa, geez, I'm always late. Did you ding the bell? I'm actually curious if the dinging the bell actually helps. Does it? Super Gaming, how are you? Doing pretty well. How are you doing? Uh, Lucas KB saying, I see your Hyphaman Sundara on the back. That is sitting right here. Any thoughts? So yeah, I actually just picked up the Hyphen and Sundar. I don't know if this cable is going to reach over here. It does barely. Um, this is an over-ear, open back, planar magnetic headphone. I think the retail price is about $350. I picked up a used copy of it, mostly just kind of out of curiosity. Um, I don't need any more open back headphones, but certainly interesting to check them out. Uh, but the, actually the reason I got this is because of another headphone that I'm going to be unboxing and reviewing on the channel very soon, which is also $350 in open back. Can you guess what it is? You don't have to guess. I'm just going to tell you. I've actually got the Philips Fidelio X3 in the house. It's sitting in a box right over there. And I will be doing an unboxing of the X3 very soon. But I wanted to know, you know, I've got the Fidelio X2 and I can compare the X3 to the X2. And I've also got the Sennheiser HD 600s, which are sitting over here, probably be my favorite $300 headphone. But I wanted to know, you know, what other things should I be comparing the X3s against? They're also 350 bucks, and I felt like the Hyphaman Sundara is a headphone I should be comparing it against. So I picked up a copy of it, and well, 
it's there. I actually just got it yesterday, so I haven't spent a ton of time listening to it, but I do immediately love it quite a lot. Azim asking, when will you get the Moondrop illumination? So I don't know. I don't know if Moondrop's going to send me the illumination. Uh, they haven't talked to me about the illumination, but if you've never heard of the illumination, maybe check out Moondrop on Instagram, or I assume maybe Facebook as well. I don't really use Facebook, but I do use Instagram, and they have been teasing images of this new IEM, the Illumination. It looks like it's all gold. The shell kind of looks similar to the KXX, but a little bit larger. And I assume, I think it's also a dynamic driver earphone. They've probably talked a little bit more about it. Um, and I haven't followed it that closely, but I'm aware of it. And I'm definitely interested in reviewing it if Moondrop is interested in sending it to me. Soro asking, will it be worth buying Tin Audio T2 now? So if you're talking about the original Tin Hi-Fi T2, it's still $50. Sometimes you can find it, actually on AliExpress, it's like $35, I think I've seen it that cheap. Um, I still think there's a really good, a really good argument for buying the Tin Hi-Fi T2, the original that I reviewed now two years ago on this channel. So. Um, still a pretty good option. If you want something that's relatively neutral, you don't want to spend a ton of money. It's a pretty, pretty good option. If you want more bass or if you want, I don't know, if bass is like a focus for you, maybe don't consider the 10 Hi-Fi Hi T2, even though I think the bass is relatively well done. There's just not a lot of bass volume there. But if you want mid-range and you want treble, treble resolution, I think you can do a lot worse than the Tin Hi-Fi T2, which is to say you should probably still consider the T2. Azim asking, will I get into the high-end stuff? And so for some folks that are watching this, you might be thinking $180 IM that I just reviewed. Surely that must be high-end. The Shozi Rouge, is this high-end audio? And the answer to that is, well, I guess it depends on your perspective. $180 is definitely not cheap to spend on audio, but you could spend a little bit more and you could spend on something like the Moondrop Blessing 2 that I've also reviewed. 320 bucks, I believe. Surely that must be high-end audio. Well, not necessarily, because the price of audio can range from a couple hundred bucks. You, well, heck, you can spend 20 bucks on a piece of audio equipment that sounds pretty nice. You can spend 200 bucks on some stuff that sounds nice, 300 bucks, 500 bucks, 1,000 bucks, 5,000 bucks, you could if you wanted to. Um, am I gonna get into that kind of stuff? I, you know, I would love to review that stuff, but I don't have access to it. And I'm not really in a position where I'm going to be spending thousands of my own dollars to acquire these IEMs. So, it's going to be up to, if companies want me to review their stuff, I'm glad to review it, but uh, I have a hard time making that that value, that value, uh, uh, I have a hard time just justifying that, that expenditure for myself. Um, so that's where I'm coming from. Postmodern ENTJ. Asking, Grado SR325E better than the Sundara? I unfortunately have not heard that particular Grado, so I can't answer you. I do have the Grado SR80s and I do have the Grado GW100. I think those are both nice sounding headphones. The Grado SR80 is a pretty bright, well, yeah, I think you could definitely describe the SR80 as a bright sounding headphone. Very light on bass, but pretty nice on upper mid-range and treble resolution. I quite like the SR80 still, but frankly, I don't listen to it a lot anymore, uh, despite the fact that it's sitting right there and I put some really cool purple Yaxi pads on it. Um, it's not the most satisfying of all my equipment. Now, it's like a $100 headphone, so I'm comparing it versus more expensive stuff, and that's probably why you're gonna ask about something like the SR325, which costs more than the SR80 that I'm talking about. Again, I haven't heard it, so I can't really tell you what that difference is. All I can say is from what I've heard, and this is just hearsay, but people that have heard a lot of the Grado stuff, 
I've heard a lot of people actually think that the SR80 is Grado's best sounding headphone. I can't back that up necessarily with my opinion, but um, I think that the SR325 is probably similar in character and maybe just a little bit more extreme in the treble emphasis. Uh, and if that is the case, I would definitely prefer the Hyphaman Sundara. So I prefer the Sundara to my SR80. I think the Sundara is just a more complete sound. It is, hmm, you know, maybe they both, both the Sundara and the SR80 have a little bit of treble emphasis. The S, you know, the Sundara can be a tad sibilant with some tracks. Um, I think uh, Church's, what is, what is the name of that album? Uh, Love? Wow, I should know this. Um, Church's latest album, they've got a couple of tracks on it that do tend to be sibilant, although they will bring out sibilants in a lot of audio equipment, and the Sundara is unfortunately one of them. Um, but I think it would probably also be sibilant on the SR80. Uh, but other than that, the, the Hyphaman Sundara just, I think, has got a much stronger, stronger imaging. Like the definition between the sounds and the positioning between them, the fact that they're not not just you know multiple sound sources kind of intermingling together, but they sound like bespoke position things. Um, I think it's much stronger here on the Sundara than it is on either of the Grados that I have. And I can't say that it's better than the SR325E, but my guess is that it probably is. Uh, Mendoko is following up saying the Anthem 5 makes custom IMs. Their cheapest model is a hybrid around 200 bucks. That's actually, if 200 bucks for a custom, if it's still a custom, maybe their cheapest model is a universal, but 200 bucks for a custom, that's pretty competitive. I have actually been interested in getting uh, the FIA Audio um, Legacy 3. They make that available in a custom for, I think, also about $200. I'm pretty interested in getting that, mostly just because I don't have any customs and 200 bucks seems like a pretty fair price to try it out. Uh, but during this pandemic, I'm not really sure if uh, it's the best idea for me to, for no reason, just go get some ear impressions. So I haven't done that. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I think we'll go ahead and wrap up this video there. That is the Shozy Rouge. Again, three stars out of five, not a bad option at $180. If you want a relatively sort of bright neutral with decent bass body, I am that looks like this. If you're interested in checking this thing out, of course, I've got links in the description down below. And if you like this video, if you found this review helpful, please hit the like button. You can subscribe to the channel, ding the bell if you want, and I'll see you on the next live stream. Peace.